Hi everyone, thanks for joining today's webinar hosted by our very own Tom Hartle. Tom's career in the financial services industry spans over 30 years and he is currently the Director of Application Services here at CQG. Today he's going to be going over some things in CQG's Microsoft Excel dashboards. If you do have any questions during the webinar, please enter them into the Q&A window off to the right, and they will be answered at the end of the presentation. And without further ado, I'll turn it over to you, Tom. Thank you, and thank you everyone for joining us today. Uh, while my technical title is Director of Application Services, what I really actually spend my time doing, 90% of it, is supporting customers using CQG and Excel. Along those lines, I post uh, all kinds of articles at our website about how to use CQG, uh, RTD, and Excel, along with designing custom dashboards, such as this one you see here, that brings in the CFTC Commitment of Traders reports. So before I go into this dashboard, I want to take you over to the CFTC website. You can see what I'm getting. And so here you should be seeing the CFTC website. And my first group of dashboards is using what's referred to as legacy data. I do plan on adding disaggregated uh, data as well as uh, dashboards as well as ones that include the options data. So if I scroll down here, you can see here, I'm pulling this, I'm gonna open up the Chicago Board of Trade uh, dashboard, or excuse me, information from the CFTC website. And this is the same exact data that I'm bringing in to CQG, or into Excel, and then ultimately into CQG. Then next, um, we can pull in historical data from the CFTC website. And you'll see here, you can click on this, and it gives us a date. So I could pick like say June 26, and then if I come over to, again, the Chicago Board of Trade, you'll see it's the CFTC COT report for June 26. And I'm using this very same data in uh, the, the dashboards and um, Excel, <clears throat> excuse me, and then brought into CQG. So now these dashboards are located here. If you go to um, the CQG website, and you click down here on CQG, RTD, and Excel, you'll see you go to my blog. And I have about 200 posts here that are about 35% uh, of them are how to do things, and <clears throat> the other 65% are CAN dashboards. So before I get into the, um, the nitty gritty of this latest dashboard, I just wanna take a quick second and show you that there's a lot of information here for people who are using CQG and Excel. And in fact, you can come over here to the Workspaces Index, and I use in the titles of my uh, Excel work or the, the blog posts what the topic is about. So for example, let's say you wanted to know how to bring into Excel um, a, the close at a certain time, you could put in here time into this search topics, and you'll see the various posts that I have, such as pulling data into Excel by date and time. So now I'm gonna go back to the main website here. And as I mentioned, Commitment of Traders Dashboard and CQG COT Studies. So what this post does is it walks you through what this dashboard's about, including we have a new study uh, called XLTS uh, Study, stands for Excel Time Series, where we can pull data right out of a, a dashboard and plot it on a chart. And so what I've done is I've built dashboards for the CBOT, for the CME, for the old COMEX data, ICE, and NYMEX data, along with a downloadable COT studies pack so that you can just go ahead and launch the dashboard and then you can pull up the studies within CQG and bring the data in there. So now I'm gonna go back to my dashboard and I wanna walk you through some of the features about it. So, this is the exact same data that we saw on the CFTC's website. And you can see I have a drop-down menu here for the various uh, products that are from that C CFTC site. So if I change it to corn, and you'll see now it's showing me corn, it'll be right up in here, the name, and then the, uh, the data. 
Now, if you're not familiar with it, what it breaks down into, you have reportable positions, and these are very large traders, hedge funds, uh, CTAs that are non-commercial. And so uh, over here we have the commercial uh, data, and those are going to be like producers, um, farmers, uh, silos, whatnot. And then what's left over on the non-reportable uh, positions are long and shorts, and those are the smaller traders. And if you notice, what I have here is I have, I'm going to put it back to uh, 10 year. And so I have it as August 28th because this was the most recent report. Over here, I have, you can get data by date. So for example, I have, I could put in, um, uh, click by, data by date, and it'll pull in the data by that date. And then down along here, I have a comparison. WebEx has given me a problem. I have a comparison of those two dates, August 28th, July 24th, and it shows you the separation or what, what has changed from those two dates. Now, if I wanted, I could put in um, a different date. I could put in, say, 731, get data by date. And now I can, so this allows me as an analyst, I could look at different dates, see what the difference is down here. Now what the big thing is for people looking at COT data is the net positions, okay? So what that is is going to be on the non-commercials, how many are we long, how many are they short, and what that net difference is. And right now it's minus 590,000 con over contracts, which means that the non-commercials are short way more than they are long in the 10-year T-note. The commercials are long by this amount, net long, and then the non-reportables, uh, the smaller speculators are uh, short by about this amount. Now, um, this report comes out from the CFTC on Fridays. So if you click over here on dates, you'll see that I have um, the, um, I can check for the latest update. So that would be my first step. And so if I click on here, hopefully this won't take too long. What it's doing is it's going and finding out the date for me of the latest update. And it says 828. And then this is showing me the top five rows of historical data. So I can make sure that these are all seven days apart. And because of the fact that I have 828 is my latest update, and then the current date is uh, 828 of my updated reports, uh, I am up to date at this point. Also, if you were looking for a, a particular date, this is where you'd come over here to look at this and say, okay, I want to look at the last week of April. Well, it's April 24th, so I would put over in the other uh, main display, 4-24-2018, and it would give me uh, that uh, data. Uh, so I use that for that. So now, if you, on Friday when you update your tables, what it does is, uh, It'll take a few minutes for it to do it because it has to go to the CFTC website. It has to open it up, bring it into uh, the Excel dashboard, open up the various tabs for each of those markets and update them. So it could take three to five minutes for that to happen. And then it will, um, there will be, uh, Excel won't basically be available at that point in time. So if you're, uh, everything's all up to date, let's go ahead and switch over to CQG now. So here we have the 10 year T note. And when you download the, uh, the COT studies pack for the CBOT, you can add the study. And so you can see I've got these in folders under custom studies. And those, this is for the CBOT. And basically, it's just COT underline and then the CQG symbol. And I can add it. And here we see it um, plotted along the, uh, on the bottom chart. Move this up a little bit so it's not blocked by uh, my little aim icon. So um, I'm going to show you the, the formulas in CQG are not locked. So here we have the formulas, and here's the TYA. 
and you can see, and this is very important to notice that um, it's set up like this, and you can see here this is the name of the spreadsheet and the tab that it's being the data is being brought in from. If you were to download two of these dashboards, Google or whatever you're using is going to change the name of the dashboard and say it's the first or second one. So it's very important that the dashboard that you download, that you make sure that the name is not affected from the download. Otherwise, CQG is not going to be able to find that um, particular dashboard. Now, you can also, the studies are not locked, so maybe you want to change the colors. Uh, or uh, make them thicker or something like that, you can modify the studies. Make sure the share scale is on, and that way everything is uh, balanced out in here. Now, I don't have a COT study per se. So in other words, you can't pull up the TOIA chart, hit COT study, and expect to see the data. But there's a good thing to that uh, side of that is it allows us to uh, put on multiple studies. So for example, you might want to look at TUA along with the TYA and see what's going on uh, in the two-year versus what's going on with the 10-year. And so you can see over this past uh, year or so, they've been uh, aggressively shorting the two-year while they were not shorting the 10-year, implying they're expecting a uh, flattening of the yield curve. And so if I come over here and show this, say, on this chart, which is Bring this up here. This is the two year, 10 year spread. And it basically gives you the same information, showing you how th they were shorting the two year and then they started aggressively the net commercials, excuse me, this is the net non commercials, um, started also shorting the 10 year. And here recently they've uh, been starting to short the two year again, but also looking at this 10 year. Uh, non-commercials, net positions, there are record short levels right now. Now the data that I have goes all the way back to 2000. Um, and so you could, uh, like for example, you could pull up a weekly chart. And I've got this now here, I have this on uh, for soybeans going back to 2000. And most of the markets from the CFTC websites, I've, I put in all this data. And the only data I have in Excel that's being saved is the net positions. Um, all that other data is um, available from the CFTC website. And also if you want that historical data, you can uh, go get it from the uh, CFTC website as they have uh, Excel uh, spreadsheets uh, by year. And so if you wanted this data uh, to have it in Excel, uh, you know, out of Excel, into Excel the data, and you wanted to do further testing and play around with it or whatever, you can just right click on the chart and say export to Excel. You'd want to make it a weekly uh, chart first because um, these are weekly reports. And you can see I now have all the data uh, in Excel and you can save it and you can go ahead and use that for uh, whatever you want to, to do. Now occasionally I've had it happen that when I have opened up the dashboard and then added the study, it hit Excel pretty hard and, and created a bit of a problem. Uh, if that happens to you, simply uh, close Excel, add the study, open Excel, and then the study populates without any problem. So this uh, is actually everything I wanted to show you uh, about using the COT dashboards with um, Excel and how you can bring this data into um, uh, into uh, CQG. And one last thing, uh, going back to my, the blog post, if you're interested in knowing more about this Excel time series study, you can see I've written a blog post here where it walks you through all of the various uh, of, uh, formulas and there's a sample and you can then go ahead and uh, learn more about the XLTS study. Yes, Allison? Um, oh, no. I. You're fine, go ahead. Okay, well that, that, that's actually it. Are there any questions? I'm not seeing any come through right now. Why don't we just wait a few moments if ever anyone wants to ask a question or two. Okay, also keep in mind that when you work with my blog post, you can always email me directly if you have any questions. And this is, I spend 90% of my time supporting customers using CQG with Excel.
Okay, um, Tom, there is one question. Could you briefly explain how you pull the data from the CFTC website? Yeah, it's a VBA code. And it um, basically, the code has the instructions to go to the URL at the CFTC uh, on that particular page and it pulls it into a tab into Excel. Okay, great, thank you. Okay. Well, again, thank you everybody for attending. <clears throat> and um, people have asked for this data for a long time, and so now we have a way of bringing it into a CQG. And again, this XLTS study is really gonna be powerful. So anything you're doing in Excel and would like to bring the data into a chart for modeling or trading or whatever, uh, that XLTS study is what you wanna master. Perfect, well, great. Thanks, Tom. Okay, thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone.